coach John Desco, face-off specialist Chris Daddio, midfielder Nicky Galasso, goalie Bobby Wardwell, and midfielder Billy Moore. We'll start with a statement from coach, and now we'll bring up the questions. Coach, whenever you're ready. Well, I thought it was a great, uh, great game for college lacrosse today. Uh, the overtimes, uh, the back and forth, uh, the goalie saves, uh, just a great game for college lacrosse. And I think uh, for Syracuse University, uh, a great win here in the Carrier Dome. I thought we had, uh, we've had some great team efforts going down the stretch here with uh, Notre Dame and then Cornell. And then today I thought, uh, you know, we only put up three goals in the first half and the defense was sliding. And then on a short week, I felt the defense really knew who they were and, and did a great job there. And uh, Chris Daddio was uh, tremendous, especially in the second half of 12 of 15 for the faceoffs to give us all those possessions. And, um, and I, th I think their offense caught up, uh, you know, with the defense in the second half. We were able to put some points on and, and uh, put it into overtime. And Chris gave us all those valuable possessions, which I thought was huge. And um, hats off to Carolina, tough place to play. They did a great job. And, and their goalie was terrific, uh, you know, in the second half, going down the stretch. The first half, I think. Uh, Mike pointed out we had uh, uh, we scored three goals on uh, nine or ten shots, and he had six saves uh, in the first half. So I thought he just he, he played terrific today. Questions for Syracuse? Bill, can you kind of take us through uh, the, the game right there, or how that play transpired? Uh, yeah, I, I mean Randy, I saw had the ball, and I know he loves going up the right side, and he started doing that. And the way they've been sliding all day is they were actually when the attack was coming up, they were sliding down from us. Uh, and I saw my guy go, and I knew Randy would find me, and he did, and I just let it fly. Let it fly. Can you take us to the aftermath? If you calm now, I don't imagine we're so calm now. So you know, it all kind of, it's, it's a blur, to be honest. Um, you know, I, you see the net move, and you're kind of like, what just happened? And then the next thing you know, you're getting tackled by a bunch of guys. Uh, it's a great feeling. I'm um, just happy we got out with the W. How great was it to get that second chance? You had that open shot with the left in the first time. I was sure you were going to bury it. Yeah, I, I was hoping I got another shot because I knew I let one go. Um, that's usually my spot, and I really did. I was really upset with myself because I let that one go, and then I was just happy Randy found me there and glad it went in. Thank you. You came from UNC to Q's. Does this make this win even bigger for you? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but, you know, it's, it's just, just another game, you know, so I'm glad we came out to win, and, we, you know, we have our next uh, opponent to uh, focus on, so. And Chris, what was it about RG and Brent and Frankie Kelly that wasn't really clicking? I mean, you dominated them at the faceoff. Was it timing or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've just been all working really hard, uh, all three, uh, the wings and everything. And I mean, it's, it's just been going our way lately. Um, I mean, they're both great faceoff guys. They both had their success. And uh, just us three, even when I wasn't winning them, uh, Pete and all the other wings were coming in pretty fast to get the ball when I was kicking them out to them. So, I mean, it's just, we've just been working so hard just to uh, finish up the rest of the season, unlike the way we started. Chris, I guess there's one piece left of the puzzle now in the sense that once you have it, you know, everybody in the stands and me thinks it's going to be an adventure, and it, and it has been. You know, there, every team's going to do that to you, I assume. Have you been getting better at it? Is it frustrating when, when you see the ball roll out of bounds? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I just got to uh, I got to calm down and take care of the ball. It's, that's, that's all there is to it. Um, I mean, teams have scouted that I've had trouble when I get the ball, and uh, I, they're doing a great job against it. And I, I mean, there was a couple times at the end where, uh, I, like at the end of regulation, almost when we had the ball two minutes left, and I won, they got the ball back because I passed it right by uh, Dylan Donahue. But it's just small things like that. When the face-off, it's not a face-off win until we get possession. John, it's obviously not a big deal in hindsight. Do you consider calling a timeout there off that scramble? Were you, were you close towards the end of regulation when Chris was trying to find Dylan? Uh, you can't call a timeout until it gets inside the 30. So I, everybody was screaming timeout, and I wanted one. Uh, we got to about the 35, and uh, we just couldn't get inside the box. So you might want to – I heard a lot of people t yelling timeout, and like, yeah, I'd like to if I could, but uh, got to get inside the 30 with it before we can. I wouldn't want to obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but we learned something. You guys, just talk about the first overtime period. You had so many unsettled chances – Point blank shots from eight yards. It certainly had the feel for a game that this kid's going to end up standing on his head, and then they're going to they're going to put one in, and you're going to all say, "What just happened?" And yet it was kind of then in the second overtime. That was kind of like I mean, it was a great shot and everything. It was a normal play, settled offense. No, I mean, just talk about how good he was, and if it was getting into your heads at all during the course of that game. 
I, he, he's a great goalie. You know, he stayed like you said. He stayed. He stood on his head there at the end of the game. And uh, you know, we just coach told, told us in halftime we weren't shooting well in the first half, and then we started shooting the ball a lot better in the second half. And you know, our, our opportunities were going to come. So I think uh, you know he did really well. You got to give him credit. Um, but you know, Billy put that one in the back of the net, and you know that, that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean he played awesome. Yeah, he really did. But I mean, like Michael Jordan used to say, when he wasn't shooting well, he keep shooting, and that's all we did. And, you know, we weren't shooting well in the first half. We kept shooting, and luckily they kind of fell our way in the second half. Billy, like John said, you know, kind of the Notre Dame win was the biggest win you guys have had, and then the Cornell win was the biggest game you've had, and now this one. Um, given how you played against the previous top five teams, did you guys feel like you needed to prove something with this one? Every win is great. Is a great win. Um, but I don't think this win's any greater than any other win. Yeah, it may look better on the record. Maybe like, we need this. We had to get in the ACC. So don't get me wrong, this win feels good. But our next opponent, Hobart, is just as important as this win is. Now, we can't slip up next week. We need to keep doing what we've been doing. And, and I think, you know, as you guys know, last year with Hobart, didn't settle well at, at the Dome here. So I think next week's just as important as this week was. Just luckily, with this win uh, today, we're, we're in the ACC tournament. For John. Nikki and Billy, you guys specifically, the second line midfield was on the field a lot in crunch time. What were you guys able to find against their defense? Um, I mean, you know, they were putting the shorties on both of us or, you know, switching it up, putting the long pole of shorties. So we were just, uh, you know, making smart dodges, dodging hard and drawing a slide and just moving the ball on. And, you know, as the game went on, that started to work. So, you know, that's all we have to do. It's not really, you know, trying to make a circus play. It's more of dodging hard and moving the ball, and then your teammates are going to find each other. You know, we, we play a good team game, and we just got to keep that going. John, would you talk about you mixed and matched your midfields toward the end of the game? You know, I think you put Scooney on the second line and, and put them out there towards the end and maybe even in, in first overtime. Then in the ultimate possession, the last possession, you went with the back of your first midfield line but replaced, I think, Lloyd with, with Billy. What was your thing? It just, you just one of the most sure-handed guys out there at that point? Well, it, it was a little bit how they were playing in this game today. And uh, I think we had asked an awful lot of Scooney. Uh, watched him go out there when we put, uh, you know, Billy with him and, uh, and Nicky. And uh, we needed him to dodge the shorty, and he kind of got lost in the offense. And he, he looked like he was dragging a little bit, or else I think he would have uh, gone after the shorty right away. So uh, didn't want to get him out to the next one. We needed him for wings on the faceoff. He's playing a lot of defense for us. And uh, we just thought these guys were, were playing well at the right time, and, you know, fortunately it was the right call. How do you feel about the play of your second midfield? And they were very productive. Yeah, we kind of... Switch them to the first line, you, you know, as the as the game went on. That they were playing very well. They were shooting. They were moving well. And uh, it was, you know, I thought they I thought they played the best game they played this year. Could you take us through the last? I mean, you get it's the, it's now it's now like college basketball where everybody's taking six timeouts in the last you know 30 seconds of regulation. I'm sure that, that you know you, when you saw that Nikki had the pole on him, you, you called the timeout and you put Scooney out there. That. But then it really was Kevin Rice going against a very good defenseman who ties the game. Was that – that's not the play you called in the huddle. No. Um, <laughs> the guys went out there and for some reason went to the side of their weaker hand. And uh, a little, little disappointed we didn't go to our, you know, strong – because we had some turnovers. I think Scotty Loy had a few turnovers going down the stretch. And that's one of the reasons uh, uh, we had some of the other guys in there. We didn't – obviously made too many tur turnovers in the fourth quarter. Um, and just to, to settle them down. Plus, we wanted to be ready for the zone again. And we saw our matchup, so we made one more substitution. But uh, just wanted to be covered for everything. And then it ended up easier. basically being Kevin making a play when he needed to make it. Yeah, play. we got uh, uh, Billy took a wing dodge, went behind. We tried the invert. Uh, 33 is terrific, by the way. They're short stick. Uh, you know, All American is a freshman and sophomore. And I'm certain he's going to be a, another one this year. He's like having a second pole out there. Uh, it didn't work, and Billy got back up top in the offense. And you know we've been going to you know Kevin quite a bit, so that was a nice it was a nice plan B after the invert. For John and Bob, with UNC's quickness, what kind of defense adjustments did you guys make as the game went on? I I just think uh, go ahead, Bobby. I mean I'm um, taking the whole thing. We just uh, you know we had quick slides to their um, attackmen, Joey Sankey and. Jimmy Bitter, excellent players, and uh, we knew all week that we were going to have to go quick to them. And uh, I thought our demons did a really good job today, helping down, and um, kind of so we could go sl slide quick and then recover back, so um, that their attack one couldn't really get inside that much. Yeah, our team defense has just gotten better, you know, since the second half of the season. 
Uh, we were giving up some early goal, you know, easy goals early, and uh, the effort going down the stretch here has been uh, just a complete turnaround. And guys are able to slide and, and recover and, and take away the inside. And I think Sankey got one off the pick, but Mullins has been doing a good job taking away the other team's top, top offensive player, at least the top attackman for the last you know three four games. Uh, so it's it's been a nice combination. Our goalie's been playing well. You know, our goalie's. Uh, we didn't miss a beat by uh, Bobby coming in the second half, and Don made some good saves in the first half. And you know they're, they're a great shooting team. John, it, did, it looked at halftime like you were a little tired, at least to me, it looked, and it just didn't have the same kind of feel that Tuesday's game down in Ithaca had. Um, did you, you thought say, we looked tired in the, I thought, in the I second in the half or going half, in actually, in the first half? In the first half, I yeah. thought you looked a little like you were dragging a little bit. And did you say anything at halftime, like to remind them that, hey, folks, you know, we got to win this game, or we're down three goals, or we're not going, to, we're going to be sitting home in two weekends? Not really. Um, you know, I think we, we were a little disappointed with our shooting in the first half, and they were playing good defense. But I think if you watched us in the third quarter, uh, other guys got in the game, and uh, we, we rotated Derek back in on attack, got some shots, and hit the pipe two or three times, and got Jordan Evans in, and we're mixing and matching in the midfield, and a lot of that, getting Nicky Weston in. So a lot of that was to, we could sense the speed of the game. They weren't subbing their shorties. Their shorties were staying the same. And uh, we just thought by using uh, more players, running more offense, uh, it might take its toll going down the stretch. And, and, we, and we gave our guys some breaks, too, especially with Billy and Scooney playing some defense, too. Chris, can you talk about how gratifying it is, especially for you, whose numbers have progressed as the season has gone on, that in a game that you finally clinch is, you know, you put it all together today? Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good. Um, like I said a couple weeks ago, I'm, I'm not going to be happy till, uh till we get back to Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I could care less about my stats, to be honest. I, I, as long as we end up with the ball and we win, uh, I don't care if it's the defense that turns over or what. Obviously, it helps if, if I win. Um, but... I'm, I'm just happy we came out with this victory. And, uh, yeah, it, it's it's nice. It, it's it's comforting, but still not there yet. Last question for Sarah. Nikki, I know she asked about UNC, but we were talking a lot this week about the injuries, et cetera. Can you put it in perspective, kind of this milestone, your dad here, and you just had a huge game to put your team into the tournament? Uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, you have to give Carolina credit. They're a great team, and you know, I, I think Coach got us prepared. You know, we had a short week of practice this week, and uh, coaches got us prepared for this game. And you know, we came out of the halftime down, and you know, Billy had an awesome speech in the uh, at halftime, and he, he, you know, he got us up, and you know, we just came out as a team and played better in the second half. So you know, um, I think we just have to look forward now and just get better every day. Really <laughs> I just says, let's play how we've been playing in practice. I mean, we, you know, <laughs> we've been we've been playing practice. You know, after Duke, everyone started questioning our heart, and I told everyone, I said, this team has more heart than any, one of the, any team I've been on. It's just a matter of doing the little things right, and we've been practicing like that. So I said, let's just play how we've been playing, and let's just be, you know, be us and, and be great, and that's what happened. He threw a couple more adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that. Thank you, guys.